We are back at BigLeaguePolitics.com, broadcasting to you from a secure location south of the Mason-Dixon line. My guest today is a very special person. He was a senior advisor on the Donald Trump presidential campaign and a longtime political advisor to the president. Please welcome Roger Stone. Roger, thanks for joining us. Patrick, great to be here. Roger, my old friend, you are a big target right now, and I want you to tell our viewers what's going on with the Robert Mueller investigation. I call him Mueller to show him disrespect. He's coming after you. What's the latest? You're going on offense. Tell our viewers about it. Well, it's an extraordinary experience. Uh, uh, in the last 72 hours, I have learned that uh, Mr. Mueller has subpoenaed a number of my young business associates, people who work with me or work for me, uh, in his Russian collusion investigation. Now, this is a wild goose chase because, as I have said repeatedly, I have no information and no involvement pertaining to Russian collusion or coordination or conspiracy with the Trump campaign or the Trump uh, a family or Trump associates or Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. I think this investigation is being driven by fake news narratives that have been put out there that claim falsely that I had advance notice of the content source or exact timing of the WikiLeaks disclosures regarding the Democratic National Committee and that I predicted in advance the uh, hacking or access uh, by WikiLeaks to John Podesta's email. Both of those are actually false, but they've been repeated ad nauseum by MSNBC and CNN, HuffPo, Slate, Salon, and the absolute worst of them all, the Daily Beast, which is not a news organization, yeah. but uh, uh, an embarrassing propaganda fund. So the the special counsel at this point very clearly in my email, in my text messages, in my phone calls, monitoring this very Skype broadcast, searching furtively and ultimately unsuccessfully for Russian collusion. Roger, when did you first become aware during the campaign that the people around Obama were trying to set up uh, people on the campaign for some kind of Russia collusion narrative? When did you first become aware that this was happening? You know, in all honesty, I didn't really become aware of it until after the election. But now I think it, it's completely understandable. We know that the Obama Justice Department and the Obama FBI fabricated a so-called dossier uh, on Donald Trump to use it as the underlying legal rationale to use the state's authority and the state's capability to conduct surveillance on the Republican candidate for president and his campaign. We now know that they even infiltrated the, the uh, Trump campaign with an FBI informant. These are egregious abuses of power that make Watergate look like small potatoes. This is the use of the machinery and the authority of the state to spy on American citizens. It is entirely unconstitutional, and therefore this entire Russian charade is an attempt to distract us from the crimes of Comey, Mueller, McCabe, Rosenstein, and others. It is particularly, Patrick, an attempt to distract us from the largest treasonous financial crime in American history, Uranium One. Yep. If Mr. Mueller wants to find evidence of Russian collusion in the 2016 presidential election, let him get the canceled check for $145 million that the Russian energy company paid to the Clinton Foundation. There it is, an indictable offense today. Take you an hour in front of a judge. Instead, rooting through Roger Stone's emails and the emails of young people who work for him, seeking something that is just not there. Roger, we know that George Papadopoulos, who was some kind of Trump campaign volunteer, was being monitored at all times by the FBI. We know that Carter Page was being surveilled. Were these two guys spies? Were they set up by somebody? Who was the spy in the Trump campaign? Well, first of all, both of them had no authority or access in the Trump campaign. They were right. volunteers 
and members of a 100-member foreign policy advisory group largely put together for the purposes of a press release. Uh, they clearly were set up. They appear to me to have been a useful idiots in this case. As to who the actual FBI informant is, the person who infiltrated the Trump campaign, um, I believe it is likely to be Steph Halper, who I actually know. Uh, he is the son of Ray Klein, a son-in-law of Ray Klein, a legendary neocon bushy. Yep. Uh, he seems to have been uh, on the periphery of the campaign, constantly suggesting contacts for Trump people. No, it looks to me like Papadopoulos uh, and uh, uh, Carter Page were set up. Yep. Which leads me to this question. The New York Times reported on page one, on January 20th, 2017, that I was the subject of a FISA war along with Carter Page and Paul Manafort. The New York Times has never retracted that story. I have filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the government to gain access because the only way a FISA warrant can be utilized on an American citizen is if they are uh, an agent of a foreign government engaged in espionage. I most definitely was not. <laughs> government stonewalling my request they have responded partially by saying FISA information is not uh, is not uh, uh, liable or not available under the Freedom of Information Act. It is exempted. I will ultimately have to go to court and sue the government, learn the circumstances of the, their surveillance of me. Roger, did you ever meet with Julian Assange? And who do you believe was the WikiLeaks source? Was it Seth Rich? Well, I never met with or spoke with Julian Assange. I never received anything from Julian Assange. While we're at it, I never received anything from the Russians and passed it on to Assange. I never received anything from Assange and passed it on to Trump. I never received anything from the Russians and passed it on to Trump. Uh, I had no notice of the content, source, or exact timing of the leaks disclosures. Mm -hmm. This is a lack conspiracy theory. Uh, this is a fairy tale. Um, I still believe that the forensic evidence indicate that the DNC was not hacked at all by the Russians. I believe the information was downloaded on kind of a portable drive. which is conclusion after reading the report by the counter-terrorism IT experts Bill Binney and Ray McGovern make a very comprehensive case based on the download times was most likely no hack. Yes, I think it was a person who passed it on uh, to WikiLeaks, and I think Mr. Red Page with his life. All you have to do is go to the chilling interview with Julian Assange. He never says Rich is the source, but he says, yes, our sources take their lives in their hands. Our sources risk their lives by giving information. And then he offers a $25,000 report for information that leads to the capture of the murder of Seth Red. Amazingly, in the mainstream media, when you're not on big politics or info or uh, you can't even mention Seth Red. It's right. forbidden. Yep. As if there's something illogical about what is obviously uh, a political murder uh, that has yet to be solved, in which the D.C. police seem to have taken the die. At a yep. Now, uh, Roger, you know, I want to uh, talk about this uh, Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, just this morning, there was a man who was arrested for opening fire at the Trump derail, and uh, thank God it looks like everyone is safe uh, and no one was hurt, but he was spewing anti-Trump rhetoric. The media seems to be whipping us up, uh, or at least whipping the left up into a frenzy right now. Um, wh where is this all going? What are they trying to accomplish? And, um, you know, are we going to be able to uh, get out of this uh, very strange place where it's seems like the media is lying to us day in and day out. I mean, what's going on? Well, we saw this yesterday where the president correctly said that gang members of M13 uh, are animals. They are animals. But the mainstream media tried to say, oh, Trump just said all illegal immigrants uh, are animals. That's not even close to what he said in response to a question. 
uh, now that uh, Mayor Giuliani, who's representing the president, has established that the Mueller uh, or the Mueller inquiry does not have the authority to indict a sitting president, their agenda is absolutely clear. They intend to issue a report that will be the basis for an impeachment resolution. They hope to win control of the Congress, therefore undo uh, at the ballot box what they could not do last November and remove our president. It's not going to happen because the American people will not stand for it. It is not 1974. There will not be another coup. The criminals are Mueller and Comey and McCabe and Rosenstein. They're up to their keisters in Uranium One, a multi-billion dollar treasonous crime. Uh, the tide is beginning to turn. Yeah. Roger, you know, we worked closely together during the campaign when I was working for Steve Bannon, and I thought that when Trump won, uh, guys like us were going to be uh, in charge, running everything. And it seems now, you know, in reporting on all these leakers, that there are just so many anti-Trump people in the administration, and there are so many uh, people who are just marginalized right now, like Diamond and Silk. I thought they were going to be the White House press secretaries. Now they're banned from Facebook. I mean, we have had to be on defense every minute since Trump won. Why is that happening? Is it Kushner? Is it Bannon? Who is, who's responsible for the fact that this administration didn't go the way that we thought it was going to go? Well, look, it's not surprising. I don't know if Steve Bannon ever sponsoring or pushing the hiring of any other Trump supporter during his time in the White House. Uh, it is absolutely clear that Jared Kushner, who's an establishmentarian, had a disproportionate amount of sway. The president has repeatedly hired people who hate his guts, don't support his agenda, who don't like him, and who leak against him. If, in the end, his presidency fails, it won't be because of liberal Democrats. It'll be because of the quizzling established Republicans that he has taken inside the fort. Half the members, more than half. I can't find anybody on the White House staff who actually voted for Donald Trump outside of maybe Kelly Ann Conway. Yep. Uh, it's disgraceful. Um, and uh, it is dangerous. Uh, now, the president has begun to wake up. He got rid of Rex Tillerson. Rex Tillerson loved the Iranian nuclear he had to go. He got rid of H.R. McMaster, who uh, Israeli intelligence tells me a review of his email would show him in constant direct contact with George Soros and his people. Uh, he worked at a Soros-funded think tank prior to becoming the president's national security advisor. Who would hire this guy? Why would Donald Trump hire a guy who hates his guts and who actually attended, as you know, as reported, a dinner with Sophia Katz, the CEO of Oracle, in which he said the president was a moron. The president was an idiot, and that it was his job, McMaster, to save the country from nuclear destruction. Uh, the president has sadly, uh, I think, been sold a bill of goods and hired a number of people who are not loyal to him. Yep. Patrick, he should make you his communications director. Absolutely true. I'm, I'm better than the mooch. I'm better that, than Scaramucci, at the least. No. Now, Ro sure. Roger, you know you knew uh, Trump for probably about 30 years. Um, you were involved the first time he tried to run in 2000. You've been one of the closest people uh, to him, and I encourage all our viewers to watch the movie Get Me Roger Stone about your life and work, which is uh, very interesting. I learned things about you even I didn't know. Um, you know him very well. What is? What do you think his mindset is right now? He's surrounded by people who don't like him very much. He's dealing with some very big things like North Korea. What's going through his mind? Well, first of all, I think he's very happy about the economy. We have 3% economic growth. We were told that was impossible. Uh, the best Obama could ever do was an average of a point and a half. I think he is frustrated by the, by, uh, the fact that he's been hamstrung by the phony Russian collusion narrative. Uh, he is forging ahead and seems to be on the cusp of a, uh, of a historic peace deal with the Koreas. No, the irony here is that he has achieved so very much given the unabated uh, attacks uh, in the mainstream media and the fake news media, given the deep enmity for him by the political establishment of both parties and their uh, unalloyed resolve to remove him from public office. Despite all of that, he's making America great again. Our economy is coming back. 
we're going to undo these multi-international trade deals where one size fits all. And they seem to be greatly beneficial to our trading partners, yep. but not to us because they cost us jobs. I still think that what's amazing is that the president has been knocked, not been knocked off his reform agenda, despite the fact that he's surrounded himself with people who just don't support that agenda. Yep. People who yep. like the status quo. Now, Roger, going into 2020, I mean, Trump supporters, we all want you to be, again, a senior advisor to the campaign. This is going to be a different campaign, though. Um, you know, this is going to be a more professional effort, so to speak. Brad Perscale is going to be the campaign manager, which means Kushner is obviously going to have some sway in the campaign. Don Jr. probably going to have a bigger role. I mean, do you see this campaign being as successful? Do you see this being a different kind of thing? Uh, talk to me about the reelection effort. Well, first of all, uh, although I think some people may find this surprising, I don't think it is a foregone conclusion that the president will definitely run. Uh, if at the end of the next three years, the economy is very strong, he has, uh, he has built the wall, sealed our borders, he has reformed our immigration policies, he has redone these trade agreements so that they're beneficial to the United States, uh, that he has got a peace agreement in Korea, uh, I could see him saying, you know what, I don't need this anymore. I've made America great again. I have kept my promises to the American people. I'm heading off to the golf course. In which case, Patrick, I guarantee you, I will have a candidate challenge Mike Pence. Yes. Arse yes. That's what I want to hear. Establishment Republican Quisling. His strings are being pulled by Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. Mike Pence is not one of us. Mike Pence is controlled by the Koch brothers who did everything humanly possible to stop Donald Trump from being president. So anybody thinks that Mike Pence gets a walk, not if I'm brave. And what not about Nikki I'm Haley? Brave. Everybody loves Nikki Haley. What about her? She loves war. She loves a foreign war where our inherent national interests are, are not clear. Given her background and the things that should have destroyed her in South Carolina, bring it on. Uh, a ticket of Pence uh, and Haley. See you in New Hampshire, boys. Can't yeah. All right. Well, uh, Mike Pence is... Uh, He's not going to, I don't think he's going to win a Republican primary if he's got Roger Stone against him. Get Me Roger Stone is the movie. Roger is an advisor to big league politics as well as a longtime advisor to the president. Roger, do you have any uh, parting words for us? Yeah, I must say this. Okay. These, this incursion into my personal life for the special counsel clearly in my email, in my phone messages, in my text messages, in violation of my Fourth Amendment rights. Uh, it's a witch hunt. It's a very, very expensive witch hunt. Uh, my legal fees have topped a half million dollars. I'm being sued by the Democratic National Committee. I'm being sued by the Project for Democracy, both of them in frivolous but expensive lawsuits. I must uh, ask people to go to stonedefensefund.com, stonedefensefund.com, and try to help save my family. This is an attempt to bankrupt me. It has systematically destroyed my business, uh, and I have no choice now but to appeal to the rank and file Trump supporters for assistance. Uh, the the full weight of the government uh, is deeply involved in my business, looking for something that doesn't exist. Uh, I don't want to suffer the fate of Paul Manafort, who has been indicted for matters that are completely unrelated to the 2016 election. Yep. Uh, and I'm mindful of any federal prosecutor's ability to fabricate crimes, to create crimes out of nothing. So I ask your listeners to consider going to stonedefensefund.com and making a generous contribution. We will put that fund up on the site because this man is in a hotel room right now. He's still fighting. He's challenging Mike Pence in 2020, despite all the legal bills and all the horrible things that uh, these people have thrown at him since the election. And the reason they're throwing it at him is because this guy was one of the small handful of people who are responsible for Donald Trump being president. Roger, it's an honor to have you. God bless you, sir. Patrick, thanks for having me today. All right, thanks, Roger.